All right, so number six, the weights of the boxes of animal crackers coming off an assembly line differ slightly and form a normal distribution whose mean is 9.8 and whose standard deviation is 0.6. All right, so we're going to have a normal distribution curve. The mean is 9.8, and if a standard deviation is 0.6, well, let's read further to figure out which way we have to go on this curve. It says, determine the number of boxes of animal crackers in a shipment of 5,000 boxes that are expected to weigh more than 11 ounces. Okay, well, 11 is more than 9.8, so it tells us we're going to have to go this way on our curve. So if I were to go one standard deviation up, 9.8 plus 0.6 is 10.4. Okay, I need to keep going because I want to reach 11. So if I go another standard deviation up, 10.4 plus 0.6 is 11. Okay, so now we've reached it. So we want to determine the number of boxes that are expected to weigh more than 11 ounces. So we're looking for everything greater than 11. All right, well, if you go to your normal distribution curve and you just look at whatever probabilities, whatever percentages over here, anything, there's only really three numbers to the right of two. There's 1.7%. 0.5% and 0.1%. If we add these together, it gives us 2.3%. So if we want to figure out how many of the boxes weigh more, well, there's 5,000 boxes. So we're going to take 5,000 and multiply it by 2.3%. So when you do that, move the decimal place over twice. So it becomes 0 0.023. And when you multiply these, you get 115 boxes. Okay, so here what they want us to use is they want us to use our exponent rules to figure out what A would be equal to. So really what they're looking for us to do is condense this into X to some power, and then whatever that power is is going to be equivalent to A. Okay, so just so we can work with this on top here, just so we could see how uh, exponents correlate to radicals, if you have, let's just say, I'm just making this up off to the side. Let's say you have x to the 2 thirds power. We know the numerator always represents the power, and the denominator represents the root, right? We say power over root. So this would be the cubed root of x to the second power. OK, so that being said, this is going to be our power, and this is going to be our root. So we can rewrite this as x to the 3 fourths power. And, I mean, same idea over here. This is going to be your power, and this is going to be your root. So this is going to be x to the 2 thirds power. Now, in the denominator, when you have a power raised to another power, you just multiply these. So 5 times 1 fourth would be 5 fourths. So this can be x to the 5 fourths power. And I'll just bring down the right-hand side of the equation. Okay, so now when you're multiplying two terms, with the same base, all you're going to do is just add these exponents. So you're going to add 3 fourths and 2 thirds. When you add them, you do wind up getting 17 twelfths. So I'm going to write this as x to the 17 twelfths over, and just bring everything else down. Oh, that's supposed to be an a. <laughs> Looks like a 9. All right, so now when you're dividing two terms with the same base, you're going to subtract these exponents. So when you subtract 5 fourths, from 17 twelfths, you do wind up getting 1 sixth. So I'm going to write this as x to the 1 sixth power, and I'll bring down my equals x to the a. So if you look at this, if x to the 1 sixth equals x to the a, what that really means is that 1 sixth is equal to a. So here, a equals 1 sixth is your answer. Okay, number eight deals with binomial probability. We use this whenever we see at least, at most, or exactly. Okay, so after you take a minute to read the problem, you'll see that part A wants you to find to the nearest hundredth the probability that at least four of the five students will be on a team. So first of all, when we see at least four, at least four means four or more. And since we're only talking about a total of five students, we're really talking about exactly four students or exactly Five students. So we're going to have to use the binomial probability for both of these and then figure out what it's equal to. Okay, so out of the, let's do exactly four first. So out of the five students, we want to choose exactly four. Now in the parentheses, we're going to put the probability that they will be on a team, which is 0.39. In 
In the second parenthesis, you put the probability that they wouldn't be on a team. So 1 minus 0.39 is 0.61. And remember with probability, whatever number is your R, whatever number is to the right of the C, goes on your first, exp goes on your first parenthesis. It's the opposite of how expansions work. And then to find the second exponent, just do 5 minus 4 is 1. Okay, I'll figure out what that's equal to in a minute. So now we also have to do this for exactly 5. So instead of 5c4, we're going to do 5c5. The numbers in the parentheses will be exactly the same. The only thing that's going to change is our exponents. Since this is a 5, our first exponent will be a 5. And then since 5 minus 5 is 0, the second exponent will be a 0. Okay, you can plug these in your calculator individually. And um, the final answer has to be rounded to the nearest hundredth. So I'm just going to write double that right here. I'm going to round, instead of the two decimal places, I'll put these to 4. And then when you add these together, you get 0 0.0796. So to the nearest hundredth, it would be 0 0.08. Okay, letter B wants you to find the probability that exactly one of the five students will not be on a team. Okay, so we're finding it for exactly one. And keep in mind, they're saying will not be on a team. Okay, so first thing, for exactly one, we're going to do 5C1. Now, since they want the probability that they will not be on a team, we're going to have to put the probability that they're not on a team in the first parenthesis, which is 0.61. And the probability they will be on a team will be in the second parenthesis. And then again, whatever number is to the right of the C goes on your first parenthesis. And then since 5 minus 1 is 4, we're going to put a 4 here. So what you have to do is plug it in your calculator and round to the nearest hundredth, which you end up getting 0.07. Okay, number nine, they want us to expand this out. Now, on a piece of paper, I would definitely be able to fit this writing across like this, but because I'm using this tablet, I'm not going to be able to fit it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write going down instead of going across. Not a big deal. Now, we know that what we're going to do is we're going to start at whatever this exponent is, we're going to start at that C0. So we're going to start at 5C0, and then we're going to do 5C1, 5C2, all the way until we get to 5C5. Okay, again, I know we're normally used to writing this going across, and we put addition signs in between each of these terms, but I'm not doing that here because I'm not going to be able to fit it. Okay, now, whatever's in the first spot in our parentheses is what goes in the first parentheses for each of these. So we're going to have 6m to the fourth in each of these first parentheses. Okay, now in the second spot in each parenthesis, well, I'm sorry, let me say it again. Since we have a negative n cubed in the second spot, uh, let's put that in our second spot in each parenthesis. Now keep in mind your exponents work the opposite as they do in binomial probability. With expansions, whatever number is to the right of the C expands all the way out to your right parenthesis. So here we're going to have a 0, and then a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, now to come up with the number on the first parenthesis, you just subtract these. 5 minus 0 is 5, so we're going to put a 5 here. And following that pattern down, it's going to be 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, so now I'm just going to figure out what each of these terms are equal to. So I like to, just, I like to do all of my combinations first. Okay, so 5C0 is 1. 5C1 is 5, 5C2 is 10, 5C3 is 10, 5C4 is 5, and 5C5 is 1. Okay, now I like to do all of my first parentheses first. So we're going to have some big numbers here. So we have to take 6 and raise it to the 5th power, as well as m to the 4th and raise it to the 5th. Okay, so first, 6 to the 5th is 7,776. And here, m to the 4th raised to the fifth. When you have a power to a power, you just multiply these. So 4 times 5 is 20. So it'll be m to the 20th. Okay, now following that pattern as we work our way down, I'm now going to do 6m to the fourth to the fourth. So 6 to the fourth is 1,296. And here, when I multiply this power to the power, I get 16. So it's m to the 16. Okay, 6m to the fourth cubed is going to be 216 m to the 12th. 6m to the 4th squared is going to be 36m to the 8th. 
um, 6n to the fourth to the first, well, anything raised to the first power is just itself. And then here, when we're raising this to the zero power, anything to the zero power is just equal to 1. Okay, now we're going to work with our last final set of parentheses here. So again, when you raise something to the zero power, it's just equal to 1. Now, keep in mind, when you're raising a negative to an odd power, like 1, 3, or 5, it's going to be a negative answer. When you're raising a negative to an even power, like 2, 4, or even 0, it's going to be a positive answer. All right, so anyway, negative n cubed to the first is negative n cubed. Negative n cubed squared is going to be positive n to the sixth. Okay, as we work our way down, we're going to get negative n to the ninth, positive n to the twelfth, and negative n to the fifteenth. Okay, so now at this point I'm going to take my answers and I'm going to write it going across as one big long expression. So really what you're doing is you're adding all these together. Okay, so we're going to multiply. When you multiply out this first term right here, you get 7,776 m to the 20th. When you multiply these out right here, you're going to wind up with negative 6,480 m to the 16th n cubed. And then I'm going to keep going. So the next uh, product right here is going to be, oops, that's a plus sign, 2,160 m to the 12th n to the 6th. Then minus 360 m to the 8th n to the 9th plus 30 m to the 4th n to the 12th and then minus n to the 15th. Okay, for the last question, um, I actually like to draw a Venn diagram for this. So for part A, I'm just going to draw a Venn diagram to represent my information. Okay, so it says, um, of the light bulbs available at a store, 42% are fluorescent. So for fluorescent, I'm going to write that as 0 0.42. And it says 53% are labeled as long life. So for long life, we'll make that a 0 0.53 on top of the circle. And 32% are neither. So we'll put a 0.32 outside of both circles. Okay, part A. What is the probability that the light bulb is both fluorescent and lifelong? All right, when they say both, what they're really looking for is they're looking for the and, right? They want the probability of fluorescent and lifelong. So whenever they say that, they're looking for this overlapping section right here in the middle. All right, well, what's going to happen is if you, if you were to add up 0 0.42, 0 0.53, and 0 0.32, it should add up to more than 1 because what happens is this overlapping section right here is counted with the fluorescent as well as the lifelong. So let's do that. Let's add these up. And whatever, however, you know, far you go over one, that's what's going to be your overlap. So we get 1.27. What that means is this 0.27 was counted in the 0.42 as well as the 0.53. So that must be our and. So I'm going to put the 0.27 right there. So that's actually the answer to this part, okay? The probability of both is 0.27. Okay, now in part B, it wants to know, are the events fluorescent and lifelong independent? Well, we know that events are independent if the probability of F and L is equal to the product of the probability of F and the probability of L. Okay, well, we just found the probability of F and L right here, so let's replace this with a 0.27. And we know the probability of F is 0.42. And the probability of L is 0.53. So we'll put a 0.42 and a 0.53. Okay, so let's bring down the 0.27. And if you multiply together 0.42 and 0.53, it gives you 0.2226. So these don't equal. So you can say that no, they're not independent.